Next, I want to convince you that really you can do much more than just adding two numbers, uh, even with toy and with switches and lights. So uh, the basic concept is that the, even the few instructions that we've given for toy support the same basic programming constructs that uh, Java does. Uh, so we have uh, primitive data types, we've got the uh, arithmetic operations, and we've got the bitwise operations. Uh, we have things like assignment statements and some, some math, uh, loading stuff into registers and implementing things. We have conditionals and loops, and we'll talk about that. We can do arrays. Uh, that's what opcodes A and B are for, and we'll talk about that in the next lecture. Uh, we're going to talk about standard input and output uh, in just a minute, uh, and, and we have advanced programming constructs as well. Uh, we can do functions in libraries. That's what opcodes E and F are about, and there's uh, plenty of discussion in the text and the book, the book site uh, about that. We're not taking the time to do it in lecture. Uh, and link structures as well. In fact, in the book, there's a toy program that uses binary search trees to uh, dedupe uh, uh, in uh, input that with no limit on its length. Uh, it's kind of amazing that uh, you might think that you can pr perform these kinds of functions with the very few instructions that we have. Uh, but actually, if you take the time to do it, uh, you'll see that the really the toy program for binary search trees is uh, in some ways easier to understand than the Java program. And lots of these things are done with toy programs that only use uh, 10 to 20 or 30 instructions. Not very many instructions at all to do uh, really a lot. It's, it's really quite amazing and it's worthwhile to take the time to look at uh, machine language programs that do familiar tasks. And there's plenty of examples of this uh, in the book site and uh, in the, on the book site and in the book. So uh, let's look at uh, conditionals and loops to start. So uh, there's instructions, uh, a few instructions within TOY that uh, change the value of the PC. And that's how we control the flow of instruction execution. We test a register's value and change the PC depending on the value. So that's opcode C and opcode D, branch of zero and branch of positive. Uh, so these instructions take a register and an address and they test that register and depending on the result, they change the PC to that address. Uh, so just a really simple program that computes the absolute value of the uh, number in register A. Uh, DA12, uh, so D's uh, opcode branch of positive, uh, check if A is positive. Uh, uh, if it's positive, then set the PC to uh, memory location 12. Uh, this instruction's at 10, uh, the next instruction is 11, and then so 12 would be skipping the next instruction. And what's the next instruction? Uh, it's opcode 2, which is subtract, uh, and the uh, operands are 0, which is uh, 0 by convention, and register A, so it subtracts register A from 0. Uh, so if it was negative, that'll make it positive, and then puts the result into register A. So that's a, a two instruction program that computes the absolute value. Uh, so that's a conditional. Uh, and a typical loop uh, works uh, as follows. Assume, let's assume that register one has uh, the value one in it. The opcode C is branch of zero. Uh, and then we test the value of register A. If it's, uh, if it's zero, we go to 15. That's branching out of the loop. Uh, then we have whatever our loop instructions might be, and then we'd have somewhere a subtract instruction which says uh, two is subtract, one has the value 001, uh, A's got some value, you subtract one from it and put the result back in A, that's decrementing register A by one, and then after you do that, do a branch if zero on register zero, which always succeeds, and sets the PC to 10. So you can see that's how we can implement uh, a, a while loop that uh, decrements a register until zero. Uh, just those few instructions, we can go ahead and implement the kinds of constructs that we use uh, all the time in higher level languages like Java. And we'll give an example of a program that does this in just a minute. So uh, that's the kind of Java-ish uh, expression of this same code. Uh, we'll try to document our programs like that without being too uh, 
persnickety about the correspondence. Uh, and as we saw when we first programmed in the second lecture, once we got to loops, we realized that all of a sudden that gives us the capability to do way, way, way more than we could do uh, without being able to control the flow. But it doesn't take much, just a couple of toy instructions to uh, get us there. Uh, but the other thing is, is input and output. Uh, it's one thing to implement a program with switches and lights, but to implement, to, uh, to input data with switches and lights, people knew right away it's just not going to work. So one of the very first things that happened uh, on the, all the earliest computers was to have some way to get uh, data from the outside world uh, into the machine. And uh, just to give uh, an idea, uh, we're going to talk about uh, paper tape. Uh, and that's actually the method uh, that I used for a couple of years. And what they literally did was on the side of the machine, they bolted some I.O. devices that uh, could uh, read and write uh, paper tape. And we're going to talk about them in terms of uh, standard in and standard out uh, that are familiar to you. Um, and what is paper tape? Uh, it would come in rolls or sometimes it would come in what's called fan fold. It would be folded. Uh, and uh, it's uh, paper and it's, uh, it, we think of it as uh, unbounded in length. You can read as much as you want. Uh, and it's got holes punched in it. Uh, we encode our 16-bit words in two rows on the tape. So this is a 16-bit word where the first eight bits are zero, then uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 0, 1, 1, 1. Uh, and then there's little holes in the middle that are sprockets that are used to drive the tape through the tape reader. Uh, so to write a word, there, there's a little thing that can punch the holes, and it would just punch a hole corresponding to each one. And to read a word, you know, basically, uh, the device would shine a light behind the tape, and then on the other side, it would sense the holes, uh, and then it would know what's supposed to be zero, what's supposed to be one. Uh, and that's it, very uh, simple device. And how do we access this with a toy program? Uh, well, what we're going to do is just uh, connect this thing to memory location FF. And so memory location FF is not really a memory location. Uh, if you store something to memory location FF, instead of storing that in the memory, uh, it would activate the paper tape punch to punch the holes corresponding to the values of the word that you, that you said you'd store. Uh, and to read, you do the same thing. When you load from FF, then uh, the device, that would be a signal to the device uh, to go ahead and read a word uh, and, and provide that, uh, put that uh, in as if it was, came from memory. Very simple device, and uh, actually the uh, paper tape hardware itself is not really significant with, because very quickly that was replaced by magnetic tape, which could uh, hold way, way more data and go a lot faster. But from the point of view of the programs, no change at all. Uh, it's like standard input and standard output. I, I think of the uh, input stream and the output stream as infinite. Within my program, I don't have any bound. I just uh, write to FF or I just read from FF. So uh, that uh, changes quite a bit what we can do with uh, toy programs. And we'll talk about the impact of, of this uh, in the next lecture. But just as an example, uh, let's look at uh, flow of, this is a real program. Uh, that illustrates the flow of control uh, and standard output. Uh, so what this program does is print on paper tape the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, and it's kind of a toy example, although I have to say with early computers, uh, you have to imagine doing this stuff with pencil and paper and the excitement of being able to actually compute uh, things that you didn't know, like really large Fibonacci numbers uh, or other uh, basic mathematical properties of integers, people were very excited to write programs like this and be able to uh, learn things really about, about math. Uh, and so lots of the early programs were of this form. Uh, but if you want, you can think, well, this is uh, scientific data of some kind uh, that is going on to the paper tape uh, for later processing. 
uh, and certainly uh, there was quite a bit of that uh, as well. But let's look at the uh, example. Just to, uh, I think you'll see after this example, there's lots of things you could do uh, with, uh, with this computer. This is just a 13, uh, 13 instructions uh, to get this job done. So let's look at what it does. So uh, our convention is to put the value uh, one in register one. Uh, and that, uh, I haven't talked about instruction uh, seven, that's uh, load address instruction. And what that does is take the value of the address and put it in uh, the register uh, and then clear out the upper bits of the register with zero. So that's a quick way to get a value into a register. Uh, and then we start out with uh, register A and register B uh, and we set them to one. Uh, and then uh, register nine is gonna get the location of whatever's in memory location 4C. If you look down at 4C, it's got the value A. So that's data for this program. It says we wanna punch out 10 Fibonacci numbers. And we're just putting 10 for this example. We could put, a, of course, a much larger number if we wanted. Uh, so that's going to be our counter for our loop, that's n. Uh, and register 9 is uh, our index for our loop, uh, or that corresponds to i in the pseudocode at right. Uh, so now we test if i is 0 or register 9 is 0. Uh, and this is our while loop con construct. Uh, C means uh, branch is 0, 9 means register 9, and then 4b is down at the halt instruction. So uh, this is going to be our loop. Uh, it's not 0, of course. And uh, now it says just uh, write register A to standard out. That's just 9AFF. And we execute that. Uh, we punch out a 1. Uh, now Fibonacci numbers, uh, so it's A and B are the two previous. So uh, we add them, uh, put the result in C, uh, and then uh, move B to A and C to B. Those are going to be our two previous that we'll always keep track of. Uh, and then decrement register 9. Uh, and now we'll just show what happens every time through the loop. Uh, we go on and decrement register 9 and seize the uh, sum of the two previous, uh, and then we update the two previous. So a very simple program, uh, and again, we could make that 100 or 1,000 or all the way up to 32,000 uh, things that we could punch out, and it could be a much more complicated number than the Fibonacci's. And then finally, we come to the halt instruction. So with that sample program and uh, this slide, which is called the toy reference card, uh, you can uh, already, I'm sure, imagine writing code to solve many, many of the computational problems that we addressed early on in Java. Uh, if, it, if it involves flow of control and it involves uh, integer bitwise operations, uh, there's really a lot you can do. You'll find uh, plenty of examples uh, in the book. Uh, and the other thing to remember about this card is that it is a complete specification of what happens in the computer. Any 16-bit uh, value uh, can be decoded using this card, and it, uh, the uh, pseudocode in blue on the right is specifies exactly what toy will do if you get that instruction. Uh, we'll describe a few more uh, in the next lecture, and they're all uh, described with examples uh, in the, on the book site uh, and in the book. But this is a complete uh, descri description of what goes on in toy. And uh, real computers uh, for many years had uh, programmers carry these cards in their pocket uh, as a full description of what you needed to know uh, while programming. Uh, sometimes the th cards got uh, uh, really quite detailed. Uh, there were computers that had 256 instructions, so the card folded and there was lots and lots of uh, information on it. Uh, but that's something that every programmer had to know and had to have quick reference to. Uh, when they uh, looked at what's in the memory, uh, they had to know exactly what the computer would do if it happened to interpret that thing as an instruction. Or when you're crafting a program, uh, this is what you have to work with. Uh, it's your manual. So uh, toy programming is an uh, interesting intellectual challenge, uh, and I encourage everybody to uh, learn more about it.
And so the kind of thing, though, that, that you have to know to be sure that uh, you really understand what's going on, you have to be able to answer questions uh, of this sort. Uh, so uh, I give you a 16-bit number. What, what is that number if it's interpreted as a toy instruction or as a two's complement integer value uh, for all different kinds of numbers? Uh, so. Uh, well, 1A75, that's easy. 1 is the add instruction, A is uh, the result. We're going to add register 7 and 5, put the result in A. 2's complement integer value, well, it's a 1, it's positive, so uh, we can use uh, hex to do it. It's 1 times 16 cubed plus 10 times 16 squared plus 7 times 16 plus 5. And actually, this kind of conversion is an easy programming exercise. Uh, and in the book and on the book site, you can see a general purpose program for uh, doing these kinds of conversions. Or you could write a to toy program to do it even. So what about zero FFF? Uh, well, the card says if the initial uh, four bits are zero, that's a halt instruction. That's it. The uh, rest of it's ignored. Uh, what about as a two's complement? Well, uh, it's an easy way to compute that is uh, if you have uh, 1,000, that's 16 cubed, and subtract 1, 16 cubed is 4096, subtract 1, you get 4095. Uh, 8888, eight, eight, well, 8 is load instruction, the next 8 means register 8, and 88 means memory location 88. And as a 2's complement integer value, uh, well, uh, you can do it by converting to binary and so forth and converting back, but actually the idea of flipping all the bits and adding one works in any number system. Uh, and so actually uh, you get this by uh, subtracting uh, all from 15 and then adding one, uh, one less than the base. Uh, so these types of questions, a uh, short answer question that you might find on a quiz or an exam uh, on this material. You want to be able to know what every 16-bit value means as a toy instruction uh, or as a data value. So uh, just as a trick, uh, how do you flip all the bits in a toy register? Uh, well, if you XOR with all ones, uh, then uh, XOR with a one uh, flips bits. Uh, and that's a kind of programming trick that uh, every programmer knows. Uh, everybody who programs at this level knows. Uh, and then uh, you should be able to figure out what small programs do. Uh, and uh, that might seem amazing to you, but uh, this programming model is really simple. It's much simpler than Java, and it won't take you long to figure out uh, just by studying this program, just by the examples that we've seen, uh, that what this thing does is go through a loop uh, 10 times, uh, doubling uh, the value uh, in register 2, and that so it computes uh, 1024. Uh, so that's another uh, type of question that uh, anybody can answer after uh, seeing this lecture. So how does TOY really relate to uh, your actual computer? Uh, they're totally different computing machines, but they both implement basic data types, conditionals, loops, and other low-level constructs. Uh, they both can have functions, arrays, and other high-level constructs. They both have infinite input and output streams. Really, the whole programming model that we talked about for Java, uh, Toy implements uh, just as well as your laptop does. You might say, well, but 256 words, is that really enough to do anything useful at all? It's such a small computer. And again, we keep it, keep it small to keep the scope small that uh, you can understand uh, uh, what goes on inside the computer. Uh, and actually, we'll talk next time that absolutely uh, 256 words is enough. In fact, all our sample programs of the books, which cover a big range, uh, all fit in the same memory. And we'll talk more about this uh, next time. And then uh, if you've seen the, Turing, uh, the theory lectures or when you see the Turing lectures, you'll know that uh, actually if you just change the I.O. device to both read and write, which you can do, there's nothing about the machine that says that, uh, then Toy becomes a Turing machine. It means you can compute anything that any computer uh, can compute. So Toy is, uh, in a very strong sense, equivalent to your laptop and really uh, all the computers that have been developed uh, in the last 50 years have all of these same characteristics. It's really, uh, really qu quite an amazing uh, phenomenon. 
Now, yes, uh, we want a faster one and we want more memory when we can afford it, and that's another aspect of the history of computing is that that's always true. Uh, you want a faster lap laptop with more memory. Uh, people wanted that with toy, and the last 50 years have been a continuous development of providing that. But what the computer does basically, not much change. That's what we're going to look at more next time.